One presents Based on a Wes Craven would adapt Swamp Thing's screenplay from the early Len Wein, Bernie Wrightson books with one big change. The character of Matt Cable was changed to a woman, now known as Alice Cable. The woman who would play that role? The actress cast as Cable is well known for her roles on the big and small screen like Maud, Carnival, The Fog, Escape from New York, and Back to School. Her voice work on television and video games like Gotham Girls, The New Batman Adventures, and Halo, and a best-selling author. Tony Award and Golden Globe nominated actress, Swamp Thing star, Adrian Barba. I had put my faith not only in the director, um, because I really, I didn't know Wes, know his reputation or anything. I, you know, I, I told he was a good director, and, and as soon as I got on the set, I, I realized that he was. But my faith was in the original script. When I read that script, I thought, oh, this, is, this could be wonderful. My faith was really in that screenplay. I just thought it was, it was lovely. Swamp Thing producer, Michael Usla. Adrian is one of the most talented, nicest people you will ever meet in your life. And she did 95% of all of her own stunts. She was running through that swamp and jumping into that horrible swamp. Uh, anything that you know Wes asked her to do, she did. And uh, she was just incredible from start to finish. Adrian was just one of the many extraordinary actors cast for Swamp Thing. Golden Globe nominated acting legend Louis Jordan played the film's villain, scientist Anton Arcane. Swamp Thing was one of the very first films for actor Ray Wise, who would play Dr. Alec Holland, the man who would turn into Swamp Thing. Dick Durock, the hulking six foot five actor known for his roles in the Clint Eastwood films like The Enforcer and Any Which Way You Can, would play the monster known as Swamp Thing. David Hess and Nicholas Worth played Ferret and Bruno, two of the main heavies working for Arcane. Swamp Thing producer, Michael Usling. We had Louis Jordan, who Ben had worked with at MGM. You know, Ben put together a deal for Gigi. And I had an opportunity to go to dinners with Ben and Louis Jordan and hear all the behind the scenes about Gigi and a lot of the great MGM films. Ben had been with MGM from late 1939 until 1972. So he was there for, you know, all those Tiffany years. Louis was the consummate professional. And he said his goal was to make villainy attractive. Dick DeRock, my God, um, there's not enough adjectives to describe what a nice man this guy was. There was nothing Dick wouldn't sacrifice or do. He was a chain smoker. And if there was a kid on the set, he would immediately get rid of his cigarette because he didn't want any kids seeing Swamp Thing smoking a cigarette. He went through physical torture in the makeup, uh, in the sweltering heat. He endured everything that you could possibly imagine. Dick was phenomenal. Nikki Worth, one of the nicest, most, I don't know even how to describe Nikki. He, he's a very spiritual, very spiritual guy. We were all there under battle war conditions and uh, everybody kind of bonded and it, it was it was just a very tough, but um, really good bonding experience for I think all of us. For the role of Jude, a young adolescent who befriends and helps Barbo's Alice Cable, a search was launched to find a fresh face to play the part. The role would go to Reggie Batts, who was relatively new to the acting scene and would become one of the fan favorites from the film. The actor who played Jude, Swamp Thing star, Reggie Batts. In Charleston, they have this yearly arts festival called Spileto. Giancarlo Minotti, I believe, was a gentleman looking to put a, a bunch of kids in a play. He had written about his son, it was called Chip and His Dog. And a group of people from my school got chosen to go to this play. And uh, I got the part. It was fun. It, it was like a big deal, because that was, I'd say that was the biggest exposure up until that point as far as theater was concerned. Was just doing the Spileto thing that ran. Somebody saw me in that, casting agents or whatever saw me and said, hey, I think you got something here. They're passing for um, this production. And I don't know if they'd mentioned the name or not. It didn't immediately click with me at first. So I, I, you know, I just said, oh, yeah, whatever, I'm game. I started going to these uh, auditions. Back then, 
you had to go, you know, physically go in, wait in line, take your turn, and then wait to get a call back. And I kept getting callbacks locally. Um, it got down to a few people. The magnitude of it didn't really start hitting me until the lady that does a callback said, "You know, we're you know we're interviewing over three thousand kids." And I'm like, "Wow!" Because I up until that point, I thought it was a couple hundred people. I'd gone in for the last read and actually met Wes and read with a few of the cast members at the time. I was on the way down the elevator. I figured, you know, there's no way it's going to pick me. You got other talent people. On the way down the elevator, I got a call from somebody from upstairs. They said, bring it back up. And they told me I got the part. And I, I was over the moon with that one. While Michael Uslin and Wes Craven were excited to bring the Swamp Thing comic to life, most of the adult actors would see their parts as simply their new acting jobs but Reggie immediately understood how amazing this acting opportunity truly was. Swamp Thing star, Reggie Batts. As a kid, I was very small, frail, asthmatic, wore glasses, I was a nerd. I spent a lot of time at the uh, local pharmacy down the block, sitting in front of those spinning magazine racks with the comic books on them, for hours reading comic books. I loved comic books. I knew what Swamp Thing was. I mean, I had a few issues. I mean, I loved those things, so that was my outlet. When I went in, I interviewed with Benjamin Melnicker and Michael Uslan, and they said to me, hey, look, the, uh, the plan is we want to make comic book movies. That's what we want to do. And I'm like, Phew. yeah, oh yeah, I'm all about that. Beyond this amazing cast, there was one man who joined the crew right at the start of production, who wasn't a part of the usual Hollywood machine. That would be the story of a young man who would be thrown headfirst into the world of movie making and special effects, thanks to a drive to be involved in films and an excellent letter writing ability. Special effects assistant on Swamp Thing, Jeffrey Rail. A year before I graduated from college, I had written to George Romero, trying to get a job on his next film. The Dawn of the Dead had just come out, and he was getting ready to do Night Riders in the summer of 1980. And I was getting ready to graduate one month from graduation day, and Romero called me up. He was going to give me a job on Night Riders, except that he wanted me right away. I said, well, I, I, one month from graduating, I don't want to postpone graduating for a year, so I actually turned down George Romero first. George Romero went off to film his now classic cult film Night Riders, and Rail soon graduated college, still yearning to join a crew on the set of a feature film. Finding his next opportunity would take a bit more time. Jeffrey Rail, Over a year's time, wrote about 200 letters to every director and producer that I liked or thought might be fun to work with. I got a letter from Wes Craven, and it began, I am an old filmmaker in Northern California trying desperately and patiently to make it in the film business. Right now, it's been four years since I made my last film. And I'm currently working loading film on a loading dock into film cans and shipping them out to theaters. After having made Last House on the Left, The Hills Have Eyes, Stranger in Our House, and one other TV movie, that he was basically commiserating with me in the five-page letter saying that, you know, he was just trying to scratch out a living. But he said at the end of the letter, he said, if I ever shoot a film on the East Coast, I will definitely call you and give you a job on the film. Sincerely, Wes Craven. And I thought, well, that was the nicest letter I got. And it was about a year after receiving the letter from Wes Craven that I got a phone call one night in April of 1981 at about 11.30 at night. And it was Wes Craven, and he said, I'm down here in Charleston, South Carolina, getting ready to shoot a film called Swamp Thing. If you want a job, come on down. I'll give you a job on the film. And I just was like, wow, when do you want me to be there? And he said, how about 6.30 in the morning? The cast and crew of Swamp Thing would soon descend into Charleston, South Carolina, but costume troubles, alligators, equipment failures, and budget woes would just be the beginning of what was there waiting for them. If creating a film is sometimes a battle, Wes Craven was heading right into war. Thanks for watching this latest episode of Based on His Look at Swamp Thing. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you are enjoying the series, and we'll be back with Chapter 4, The Filming of Swamp Thing, with never-before-seen photos and all-new interviews with special guests Michael Uslan, Adrian Barbeau, Reggie Batts, Todd Corman, and Jeffrey Rail.